Hey, welcome to our channel. Uh, today I thought I'd talk about macro photography 101. So basically what equipment do we use and recommend if you're going to start out and try and photograph insects uh, in the field. So if that's something that interests you, you can like and subscribe and you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. is twofold. This is for folks that have been requesting us to do a macro photography 101 video and the second is we uh, get asked this every time we do a macro a bug shot macro photography workshop. So folks want to know what should I bring camera wise to get the most out of bug shot. So that's what I'm going to tell you today is exactly what we use and recommend to bring to a bug shot macro photography workshop. So this is the baseline standard setup. So a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, micro four thirds, um, we're getting more and more of those. But what you really want on your camera is the ability to have a macro lens on your camera. So bare bones, if you're just going to buy one thing, buy um, a macro lens. This is the 100 millimeter macro. This is what we generally recommend folks bring and uh, this is our go-to favorite lens. Uh, Nikon has a 105 that's also a great lens but it is pricey so what makes a macro lens a macro lens is you um, have a really close uh, minimal focusing range is quite small. So when I'm photographing a bug it's generally about this far away from my lens so it's about right here. And I'll take you out in the field after I set this whole thing up and show you exactly what it looks like when we're photographing in the field. So this lens here is a little bit pricey. It is uh, around $950,000, but uh, Lala does make um, a macro lens. They make a 2X macro lens, and I will link that video up here where we review the Lala. Um, 100 millimeter macro, it's a 2X, so you um, can zoom in and get to the smaller stuff. Um, and then we also review the MPE 65 lens, uh, all three of those together, the pluses and minuses. So if you're curious about that, uh, you can watch that video as well. But so that's, if you're just going to buy one thing, get a macro lens. It's very important. Now, this is great for bugs, of course. That's what, it's our primary lens that we use in the field. But when you're photographing smaller stuff, ants, small hoppers, nymphs of insects, um, you want a little bit more magnification than that even. And so then we would recommend like a, like a Raynox, so a Raynox lens. So if somebody says their favorite critter and what they really want to target are ants, then I will, and they do, but they don't want to start out with the MPE 65 because that can be a challenging lens, I would recommend this Raynox. And it gives you the flexibility where you can take it on and off your camera. It actually comes attached to this little guy here. <clears throat> I'm taking it off and I'll tell you why in a minute, but if you just keep it on here, you can see that you can just attach that to the end of the lens here. Um, and this will, this really will ramp up your magnification and allow you to photograph some of those smaller things. In fact, I've attached this to the end of the MPE 65 and I've stacked um, butterfly scales. So uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find that image and I'll stick that in here right now <laughs> to show you when I, what I've done. Uh, so you can get really close. <clears throat> Actually, I just realized that this is for, this doesn't have our ring on the end of it. So this uh, is, it's already set up for the MPE 65. I'm just gonna attach it back to the, so this says the Raynox can just attach to the end here. So I've just put it back on this, this thing here. So it's super easy. Uh, we do like to put it on a step down ring just simply because uh, you can kind of see here that some light can get through here um, and you really don't want that when you're photographing and it can slide around, it moves a little bit. Um, but it's a great little lens, I would highly recommend it. So the next thing that I would say, so if you wanna buy two things, a lot of people probably already have a speed light that you can use. Now this is great for uh, bird photography, um, maybe, I don't know, um, and other, other types of photography, it's not fantastic for macro photography. And the reason is, is when you attach it, when you attach it to your camera, you can see 
if my critter is here, this thing is shooting light way off into the distance, so you're not getting a lot of light. So you do have to create some sort of diffusion, um, and I'll do a whole video on diffusion material, but you have to create like some cardboard or something to come down here and attach to the lens so that the light bounces around <clears throat> and actually hits your critter, because you're really way too, you're, you're really shooting way off into the distance with a speed light. So we don't necessarily, if you don't have a speed light, don't get it for macro photography. What we would recommend is something like this. And if you come to Buckshot, I would say 50% of the people have this, this flash right here. And this is called the Kuang Ren. It, it comes in several different names. Um, I actually have nicknamed it the Kukulakania, which is a, a group of spiders. And um, because the, the word sort of looks like that, and it's got lots of arms. <laughs> and this is what we would recommend you, you use. And why, why is this great? Well, you can see. So if I'm photographing a bug, you know, just right in front, I can angle these lenses or these these flashes and you know light up the critter just like I want. And and you know you're when you're doing macro, leaves get in the way, all sorts of stuff gets in the way. And you can really move this anywhere. If I want, I can backlight the critter so you can see I can like wow, I can backlight if I want. So I can have one in the front, one in the back. I mean, this is just a great little flash. Now, you don't want just straight flash going on your critter. You always, always want to diffuse the flash on top of your of your subject. And when you come to bug shot, it's the first thing we create. Um, if you kind of if you've been to a bug shot before, and we get a ton of repeats because um, when you come to bug shot, you basically uh, you end up with like 30 of your best buggy friends, and so people just continue to, to come to bug shots to hang out with all of their buggy friends and photograph the new critters. Um, and so if you've been to a bug shop before, the first night we'll lay out all the diffusion material, and you can make your own diffusion or what you thought you wanted to create. Um, but we will go through uh, diffusion uh, for you. And this is something that we've sold in the past, and. Uh, Cognosis, which is another company that we've talked about um, in other videos. They, they're a great company. They've actually made these for us, this piece of plastic here. We attach diffusion material to. Um, this is the, this is just some vellum and some plastic. You can use anything from styrofoam. This is a plastic cutting board, or it, it actually could have been a plastic folder. So um, when those back to school sales come on, you should definitely go and buy plastic folders like this, um, various things. So this is just, a, this clamps onto the bottom of your camera, and then this is an arm. And let me set my camera down so I can show you this. Um, these pop apart so you can shorten this if you want, and you probably do want to shorten this. We have a tripod collar on the end of our lens here, and that's what I attach the foot of the diffusion material to. You need about six arms to do macro photography, right? <laughs> so then this can connect to, you can connect it to either your camera or your lens, but in this case I'm connecting it to my lens because I want to be able to get my diffusion material as close to my critter as possible. And then your flash heads go over like this. And so if your critter's here, that's what, that's what, that's what you're doing. Right here. Okay. So we actually do have one of these for sale. So if you would like that, you can um, you can email us, direct message us on Instagram or Abbott Nature, Abbott dot Nature, I think, on Instagram, and uh, just send us a direct message or email us from our website, and uh, we can send you the last one. Cognosis did make these for us for a short period of time just because they love us. <laughs> Thank you, Cognosis. Um, but I don't believe they sell them on their website anymore. I think it's just too labor intensive uh, for them and not worth the, the time and cost 
uh, for it. So anyway, so we do have one of these left, so if you're interested in it, we can sell that to you. But if this is a bit too much, then what you can do is something a little bit more simple, and I will do a whole video on diffusion materials. I will do a whole video on diffusion material, but you can just, this is styrofoam glued to a piece of plastic. We've put a piece of wire in there so that we can bend this any way that we want. Open it, just bend the corners, right? There's a bungee cord here. And then all you do is attach that to your camera. With the bungee cord, you have your diffusion material, right? So I can move my camera back this way. And there you have it. Now, one thing, one big negative to this is that when you do this, this can easily, when you're in the field trying to find your critter, it can easily slide off the end of your lens here. It just slides right off, right? So one thing you can do, so I have this step up ring and what I need to do is just screw that onto the end and then you can see there's a little lip here. So that's a really handy tip if you just want to make a styrofoam piece like this, attach this to the end of your camera like this and then bam, this is not going to slide off the end and you can more easily you know, focus with your ring here. Because if you don't have this on here, you tend to slide this back and then it gets in the way of focusing. So this is another way and probably a bit lighter than the arm like this, but I would say most of the time we are, we use this sort of a diffusion material in the field. Um, but we bring both actually when we travel. So we'll go back and forth or John will use one and I'll use the other. So, um, so yeah, so this is our standard, like if you want to be ready to go and run when you get to bug shot or if you're socially isolating right now, which hopefully you still are, um, and you want to just photograph bugs in the wild in your backyard, this is the setup that you can do. Um, I can tell you that the styrofoam is, you can easily get this, uh, look on Amazon for um, the styrofoam that they use for packing plates. That's basically what this is. We just buy a box of it at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot before we come to a bug shot and that's generally what we bring for folks to use. So I'll take this out in the field um, and we can see what this looks like uh, in the field when you're photographing bugs. Okay, so this is our macro setup in the field, and one, um, I've raved about this flash, uh, it's a Venus flash, um, and they do, like I said, there's two different names to it, one of them is Koang Ren, and I don't remember the other one, but anyway, we'll, we'll link it in below. It's, it's a great, great flash, however, a huge negative is that it is not always the most reliable thing. Now, they have gotten better. Um, about reliability, but we just had this in the field and it actually, um, it died on us. <laughs> and so it currently doesn't work, but since I showed you how to set this up, I'm just going to show you how I would photograph with it in the field. The flashes just won't fire because they currently don't. Um, we're getting a new one uh, in the mail, however. Okay, so my starter settings for my macro setup, I started ISO 400, F16, and a shutter speed of 160th. Now your shutter speed, I just try and go as fast as I can. I'm usually hand holding, so I want to minimize the shake and I want to minimize any movement that my critter has. Uh, so I try and just go as fast as possible. And that's as fast as my camera will sync to the flash. So everybody's camera will be different uh, depending on what kind of camera you have. And mine, I just, my shutter speed is 1 60th. My aperture is set to F16 and so when, when you set your aperture, if you have a really high, a low number like f5.6, that means your aperture is wide open. So your diaphragm is wide open. It's a big hole letting a lot of light in, right? But what happens is if you're at f5.6, 
5.6 is that you have a really shallow depth of field. So that means not very much of your subject is going to be in focus. And what you want, well, what you tend to want, depending on how you're, you're, you want to compose, but if you want a lot of your subject in focus, then you want to increase your aperture number to like f16 or even higher if you can. And that's just going to give you more of your critter in focus. Now the downside is, is that you're actually closing up your aperture, that, that hole in here that the light is coming in. So less light is actually coming in. And really once you get the aperture that you want and the shutter speed that you want, the best way to adjust how light or dark your image is, is with your ISO or ISO. Um, and I start at 400. 100 will be the darkest and the higher you go the more light you'll let in. So um, I started ISO 400 and then I'll increase it from there if I think I want more light. Now historically ISO would get you a very a high ISO number would get you a very grainy image and that's becoming less and less of an issue now that um, with, with digital cameras. Um, although some of the lower end and older ca digital cameras will still give you a grainier image at a higher ISO, um, but it's becoming less and less of an, an issue. But you can see, like if I'm going in here, I'm going to put my glasses up to photograph, you can see how close I have to get. So the top of this is in focus right now. Um, and so this is, that's how close you would get. And you can see that with this, you know, one of the big pitfalls to having diffusion like this is that it hits things. Like, I'm going to run into some stuff, but I can get really close to this, this flower. I mean, this flower is more than frame filling. Like, I could definitely get a little bug in there. So, so that's one of the downsides to this and one of the reasons we like that other style of diffusion that I did show you. Sort of see here if I, you know, if I've got a bug that's going underneath and I want to go sideways, I can adjust these these flashes, move it around like this, and, and look underneath and get a shot underneath like this and still be lighting up my subject. Um, this flash is really flexible and really great, and I can even go from, you know, like I can backlight it a little bit if I want my subject. Um, and do this. So these are just some of the things that we chatted about earlier and um, so this is how you would use it in the field. So if you have any questions or comments leave them below. We'd love to hear what you do, um, if you have any kind of uh, diffusion material that you like to use. We would love to, to hear uh, variations in this. Uh, we like to have a variety of things at Bug Shots, so if you have any ideas, we'd, we'd love to hear them. And if you like this video, if you could like and subscribe, then you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. It also really encourages us to make more videos like this. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye!